You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's having me on Twitter, The Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Repeat Remake, Sissel's Path. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Alright, <clears throat> here we go. Oh yeah, and y'all, I'm playing the latest updates. This adds quite a bit of content to Sissel's Path, so we've got a lot more Sissel to get through, so let's go ahead and delve right into it, shall we? Alright. Well, sure, he's not going to dump you on the streets at the dead of night. There was some shuffling noises upstairs as Herschel's voice boomed through the entire cafe. Sissy, are you inviting your crush to stay over? How could I possibly say no? You tw <laughs> I don't know if I can say that so early in this video. Uh, you... Uh, yeah, you thing. You thing. Shut up. Shut up about the crush bullshit. We don't have a guest room, though, so you'll probably have to share a bed with Sissel. Not that either of you have any issues with this, eh? Oh, for the love of... Shut your trap, boss! Cecil's cheeks were glowing red as he huffed angrily. Uh, ignore him. He's just a senile old man. You probably want to shower before bed, right? I'll get things set up for you. <laughs> we can shower together to save water if you want. Absolutely not! <laughs> oh, he's so bashful. As soon as Cecil was out of the earshot, I ducked into the back of the cafe and, whisper and whispered around urgently. Echo! Echo, are you there? Two steps ahead of you, Adrian. I've already reinforced the area around the cafe. The remnant shouldn't be able to get inside no matter how hard it tries. I breathed a sigh of relief. Good. Good. The last thing I want is for Sissel and Herschel to get hurt because of my ghostly nonsense. Are you sure you're strong enough to hold it off? Surprisingly, yes. That other wish, the Black Lady of Bradley Lake, she seems to have her set up her own protection around this building when she was here. She did all the hard work. All I need to do is reinforce it. Seems pretty straightforward. Good to know we're safe from that thing as long as one of you are here. Why is it taking such an interest in Cecil suddenly? If I were to guess, I think it's because you've taken an interest in him. Me? I think the Remnant is connected to you in some way. All of its actions seem to be a response to what you've been doing. That's my guess anyway. I felt a lump rise in my throat and I peered out the cafe windows anxiously. Why me? Adrian? Uh, Adrian, what's taking you so long? I got the shower ready for you ages ago. I'm coming, I'm coming. I'll join you in the shower real soon. No need to get feisty, big boy. I swear to fuck, I'm going to drown you in the sink. I smiled at Sissel spluttering before turning back towards Echo. Well, looks like I'll be calling it a night. Keep us safe, will ya? I'll do my best. Yeah, Echo ain't looking so hot. <laughs> After a nice hot shower alone, sadly, I let out a great big yawn as I stepped into Sissel's empty bedroom. From the sound of hissing water down the hall, Sissel was finishing up his own shower. I glanced around the room for a moment before plopping down onto the bed into an exhausted slump. I had already changed into just my boxers and tank top. The cool blankets felt so good. This was a pretty cozy way to end the day. It was nice of Herschel to let me stay over. All I need to worry about now is rushing back onto Gerania campus tomorrow morning for my classes. I ran a hand through my damp hair with a sigh. That was just the immediate problem to deal with. Hey, Sissel? I hope I'm not making things awkward or uncomfortable by sharing the bed with you. I know I joke a lot if you're not okay with it or anything. I w oh, wait. Cecil was still showering down the hall. He wasn't even in the room! The room was empty. I let an awkward groan and buried my face into the blankets. It's like I'm the one who was really nervous about this. Calm down, Adrian. It's just two dudes sharing a bed. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, Adrian, were you calling for me? Oh my. Damn, he's hot. Oof. I jumped as a shirtless Sissel stepped into the room, looking very sheepish. He was only wearing his ripped and dirty shorts from earlier, and his hair was still wet from his shower. Color suddenly spread across my cheeks, and I gulped. What? No! I mean, yeah, I, never mind. I, I just wanted to say, I, I hope you're okay with sharing a bed and whatnot. Yeah, about that. We may have a bit of a, um, a problem. Sissel scratched the back of his neck awkwardly. His face flushed as he closed the door behind him. So, um, this is really embarrassing. You already know I'm not made of money. I don't exactly have a ton of clothes, let alone a pair of pajamas. One second, y'all. Water time. Ah. Hey, that's alright. I'm just wearing a pair of boxers myself. Sissel covered his red face with one of his hands and glared fiercely at his feet. Well, about that, my underwear is usually really gross since I kind of re-wear them a lot. I actually go commando most of the time and only wear them to work, too, and, uh... 
The point is, it, I usually sleep naked to save on laundry and all that. Uh, most of my stuff is in the wash right now, and I don't have any clothes to wear to bed. Sizzle's face was a ferocious shade of red as he refused to look me in the eye, his face buried in his hands. S sorry if this makes things weird or anything. I can, go sh I can go sleep on one of the booths in the storage room if you're not comfortable. Dude, it's fine. We're both guys. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. Are you sure? You're okay with sleeping next to a naked dude? I'm more than okay if you catch my drift. Cecil let out a wheeze as he slowly tried to calm down. The color on his face slowly soothed into a healthier shade of pink. You're an absolute twat, you know that? That's why you keep me around. Now hurry up and get to bed. It's late, and you've got a long work day tomorrow. If you say so. There was a terrible grin on my face as I watched Cecil skitter towards me in the bed. With a moment of without a moment of hesitation, he quickly punched the light switch on the wall. The room immediately plunged into darkness. Fumbling with his belt, Cecil kicked his shorts aside and dove into the blankets like a missile. Wow, that was real smooth. I can't tell if you're nervous or eager. Cecil stared straight up into the ceiling and bit his lip. Will you ever stop making my life difficult? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> That's no fun now, is it? There was a minute of quiet as we both settled down into the bed. The bed was a rather small one. I could feel Cecil's warm body shifting next to me. We both yelped when we accidentally brushed against one another as though we'd been shocked. Oh my god. Oh my. I turned over on my side and stared at Sissel with a fond grin. You don't have to be so nervous, you know. I'm pretty comfortable with this whole thing. Do you need me to strip too so we're both equally nude? No, this is fine. I'm just... Ugh. Sissel slumped his head onto his pillow with a sigh. This wasn't exactly how I imagined our first time sleeping together would be like. I raised an eyebrow curiously. Oh? Don't get me wrong, I'm pretty happy to be close to you too. You're a pretty cute dude, Adrian. I just wish I had the chance to do this properly, you know? You deserve something better than this. What do you mean? Like, you know. Cecil turned towards me with a sheepish smile. Like in all those romantic movies where the guy sweeps you off your feet with his charm and attitude. And then I'd take you out on a nice romantic date and have a fun time doing dumb things together. Cecil gave an embarrassed grin as he rambled off his thoughts. There'd be parts where we hold hands and lean into each other and stuff. And of course there'd be that dramatic kiss. And then afterwards we'd all, we would all be naked in the bedroom. We'd all, we would... Afterwards... Would be all naked, the naked bedroom stuff. Cecil visibly deflated inside. I don't know, sleeping next to you like this and having you already be so happy to be around a worthless moocher like me, it almost feels like cheating, you know? My chest felt very warm as I leaned closer to Cecil with a stupidly happy grin on my face. That was probably the sweetest thing anyone has ever said to me. Really? <laughs> oh, we could always switch things up. They switch things up a bit. Bedroom fun sounds pretty good right about now. Oh my. So I get two choices here. Um, let's see. I'm gonna save that. So that's the branching path. What happens if you choose the sexy option? Uh, let's do the, uh, tame option. Then we'll do the sexy option. Okay. So, I know your whole asking me out on a date thing kind of got ruined after the whole culinary contest incident. But what about, but what were exactly were you planning to do to sweep me off my feet, as you put it? Cecil retreated into his blankets like a frightened turtle. His eyes and ears poked out of the blankets as he glared at me, his face still visibly red. You're gonna make me explain everything, aren't you? He had chuckled before ducking into the blankets and snuggled against Cecil's shoulder. He didn't protest as I pressed against him in a loose half-hug, his soft, his soft fur warm to the touch. One second, y'all. Water time. Oh, come on! I want to know what kind of romantic date I missed out on. And hey, who knows, you can take me on this sort of date in the future. I want to know what to expect. Cecil smiled a bit as he relaxed to our closeness. An arm gently draped across my shoulder and pulled me close as he hummed thoughtfully. Well, I didn't have a very clear plan, to be honest. I kind of just planned to grab that trophy cup from the contest and scream, Hey, Adrian, will you go out with me into the crowd? That's a pretty gutsy move. I probably would have said yes. <laughs> Cecil's smile grew a little wider as he rested his head against mine. Good to know that part of the plan wouldn't have fucked up. I was afraid I would have scared you away. Mm, I guess afterwards I'd take you to a romantic dinner to a fancy restaurant. The kind with mustached waiters and candles and fancy tiny food that can barely feed me one. I have no idea how I'd afford it, but I figured I'd figure something out. You had my attention until tiny food. Well, obviously we'd get, we'd get some real food afterwards at a McDonald's or something, but I'm not going to starve my date. Dinner at McDonald's. Truly the greatest thing I could ask for. Yeah, I know, right? Their burgers are pretty good. Whatever sarcasm I sent flew completely over Sissel's head. He was grinning wide as he rambled off about how good the menu was. 
I kind of feel bad for even saying it now. McDonald's wasn't bad, to be fair. Oh, and we need something fun to do afterwards to work off those calories. You care about the cal that calorie stuff, right? I never actually ate enough for it to matter. Well, sure. We could go shopping cart racing down the street. Excuse me? Cecil waved his arms excitedly as he tried to mime it out. You've never done it before? It's great. I used to do it all the time with Teach and Owen. Well, until Owen ran into a pole and fractured his leg. And then Teach knocked over an old lady. And the old lady was Mrs. Corlise. Cecil, we would die. It'd be fine as long as we don't get caught. Come on, Adrian, this, need date, this date needs to be ex needs some excitement. It'd give us a good excuse to shower together afterwards, and then we can finally get into the bedroom stuff. Cecil seemed to have finally caught himself in his excitement and noticed we were pressed up, up against each other. His blush returned full force as he shrank back into the blankets again. It'd be something like this, I guess. He tentatively leaned closer to me, our legs brushing into a tangled mess of warmth. <sighs> well, this is pretty nice, actually. Uh, pretty cozy. I laughed softly and buried my face into his fluffy neck. Do you want to do that bedroom stuff you mentioned? Cecil mumbled in embarrassment. I think I like where we are right now. This is nice. Plus, I'd want to earn it before actually doing it. Skipping to the good part is just cheating. Aw, oh, uh, your whole date plan sounded like the good part to me. Cecil laughed softly to himself. Really? You think so? Yeah. Well, I'll make sure to pull it off sometime in the near future. Then we can do the, stu the bedroom stuff for real. I couldn't help but smile at his enthusiasm. Sounds good to me. A large yawn suddenly escaped my throat as I snuggled closer into Cecil. Maybe we should get the real get to the real bedroom stuff. You know, sleeping. You have morning classes tomorrow, don't you? Yeah, and you've got a lot of work too. Time to sleep? I felt Cecil shift slightly, hesitating for a moment. And then I felt him lean down and press a warm kiss against my cheek. My smile grew even wider as I looked up and pecked him on the nose. Heh. <laughs> Good night, Adrian. Good night, Cecil. Oh, these two are adorable. This is an adorable couple. Nope. Oh, Alright. Day 12. What you've always wanted. Oh my. The next morning was a complete blur. I vaguely remember crawling out of bed like a slug and tumbling onto the floor with Sissel in a tangle of limbs. There was shouting, half-awake grumbles, and an agitated Herschel dragging us out of, the, out, of the, out of the bathroom because he urgently needed to pee. At some point, the fear of being late and disappointing Mrs. Corley struck me like the wrath of God. I immediately booked it back to Durrani Academy in a mad dash with Sissel waving drowsily as I disappeared down the street. One second, y'all. It is indeed water time once again. It turned out I didn't need to bother, mis m to bother. Mr. Rokov was teaching writing workshop again, and that was and with that insufferable level of enthusiasm that should be illegal at this hour of the day. He was addressing the class with such vigor that he didn't even notice me shuffling in 20 minutes late. I sank into a seat in the back with a sigh. It's like it's another one of those classes where we just listen to Mr. Rokov talk to himself for an hour. At least I didn't miss out on anything. Well, someone's been busy. I jumped and glanced behind me at Philip's deadpan face. He stared back with a dull thumbs up. Look... Looks like not even Bookworm Philip was immune to how boring Mr. Rokoff's classes were. I blinked and stared a little closer. There were heavy bags under Philip's eyes, and he looked like he hadn't been sleeping well. Hope he was doing alright. Oh, hey Philip, sorry I haven't been around lately. Life's been stressful. Philip raised an eyebrow suspiciously. Stressful? The frantic text I've been getting from Sissel this morning says otherwise. But what kind of text? Philip smiled, Philip smiled knowingly as he flipped through his phone for a few moments before, hand before handing it to me. It was a message group made by Sissel labeled The Mom Friends, consisting of just Jenny and Philip. The messages from earlier this morning read, Holy shit, guys, I think I might have fucked up. Probably, but you'll have to be more specific. Well, last night I accidentally slept with Adrian. Really? Yeah. You accidentally slept with Adrian. Yes. Accidentally. Yes. I don't understand. Did you trip or something? No, he was staying over and we only had one bed and shit. Isn't this a good thing? You've been trying to ask him out for the past week. I skipped so many dating steps, though. What if he thinks I'm just a horn dog who's not serious about this? I paused and scrolled through the chat's history. The earlier parts were littered with an abundance of Sissel pleading for a dating for dating advice. And Jenny wisely suggested give him a lap dance, cover yourself in chocolate, and pop out of a cake naked. Philip, on the other hand, just wrote talk to him, you know, like a normal person. Damn, sounds like you guys were busier than I was. He wouldn't stop fussing over you like a mother hen. It was kind of sweet, in the diabetes sort of way. Aw, that thought, that's thoughtful of him at least. I noticed Jenny hasn't replied recently. I figured she'd jump at this kind of thing. Have you guys told Owen about this too? Philip frowned. 
Ginny's probably sleeping in. She hasn't been feeling very well lately. And Owen went home yesterday to deal with some family stuff. He says he's coming back soon, though. For now, it's just little old me here. Anywho, I think you should message Sissel and let him know the world isn't ending before he blows up our phones again. Alrighty, thanks for the advi advice, O dating expert. I handed back Philip's phone with a sheepish grin. Word sure spread fast in Gerania. It'll be a while before Mr. Rokoff stopped his lecture that no one was listening to. Plenty of time to message Sissel to see how he was doing. I grabbed my phone and began texting Sissel under my desk discreetly. Hey, sis, how's your morning? On second thought, he might be busy with work with work at the cafe right now. Maybe I should just hold off for a while. Oh, morning, Adrian. Did you make it back to campus all right? Yep, back in boring old Rokoff's class. I should have just slept in a little more. By the way, Philip showed me your mom, your mom friend's messaging group. I paused and watched the Sicilist typing prompt cycle frantically on my screen. That little shit twat! He wasn't supposed to tell anyone! Aw, don't worry too much about it. It was really sweet to see you fussing about me. <laughs> you weren't supposed to see any of that! Oh, this is embarrassing! Hey now, I saw your messages this morning and wanted to tell you that everything's fine. I'm pretty happy with how last night went, so calm your buns and stay happy. You're doing great. If you say so. Wait, shouldn't you be in class right now? Nobody actually pays attention to Mr. Rokov. What about you? Should you be opening up the cafe? I'm very good at multitasking. There aren't any customers at the moment, anyway. I looked up from my phone and glanced at the clock. A groan, a groan immediately escaped from my escaped my throat. Just another half hour until Mr. Rokov's dull lecture was over. All right, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks, right? If you can, it always helps. Um, if y'all can tell me how choosing the sexy option changes, if it changes the story in any meaningful way, way just let me know in the comments. Anyway, y'all, I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!